Oh, goody, you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I've got a little bit of time on my hands today. Extra time because it's been raining. There's still a little bit of a drizzle around and that meant I didn't have to do that much watering as well as I didn't have to do much shuffling because last night it was quite mild and the majority of my orchids could stay outside overnight. So that saves me around two and a half hours of orchid chores in the mornings. For that reason, Let's do a patio tour if you're up for it. I really am because tonight they have to come inside. We are heading into single digits. That would be in Celsius. So I'm going to just take advantage and I hope you enjoy the video. gonna deviate away from the blooming alley for a little bit just to give you an update on Stan the man. Growth number 34 failed so we were down to 33 new growths for the season of 2023 but I found another new growth so we're back up to 34 new growths. <laughs> He is so much fun. I cannot express how much he's keeping me on my toes or on the chair to keep him watered. Yes, even during the cooler temperatures because he is thirsty. He is in full active growth, so he is getting fertilized. Once a day, once a day, but enough to keep him going. We didn't do the Blooming Alley the last patio tour because it's always a little bit complicated and even the camera now is fighting to see the light. <laughs> it's, it looks brighter on camera than it really is, but I did want to show you something if you can just bear with me because this is a milestone of a rescue. This is my Stamfordianum, my Epidendrum Stamfordianum that has been rescued from imminent whatever and it's growing a spike as they do at the base of the orchid. Ha! Huh. We shall wait and see if I'm gonna let this orchid bloom. I'm not entirely sure. I'm tempted because there's so many roots in the pot now, but that will all depend how this orchid can deal with the winter conditions and the lack of light. So, at least she's trying and that is great news considering I almost lost her. Other orchids on the top shelf are my Brassocatlia amethyst and I've got the Rinconidia, I believe, Shelob Marie L. Anyway, I'll put all the names up on the screen if my mind wanders because of course when I hit record all the noise pollution starts in the background so my mind is a little bit distracted, forgive me. The Guarechea is doing great though. That one is growing another new growth. Let me see if I can get up closer, but now I've got a pup between my legs. It's all kicking off here. But there is another new growth coming right here. And then here is my golf green hair pig. That has its new growth showing, whoa, showing a sheath. Whether it's going to amount to anything, I don't know. But all the other orchids that are now on the middle shelf, again, apologies for any jiggle. Here's my spicery in bloom. This is the second bloom. I cut the first one off just to not tax the orchid too much. And yes, I did say I was gonna cut my Senua blooms off, but I just can't bring myself to do it. I just can't. At the beginning of the season of 2023, a pollinator took out 10 blooms very, very quickly. I got some seed pods out of it, but this pop of color is I just I just can't help myself so I hope there's enough orchid left so that when it comes time to mount her in 2024 that she will still be strong enough to be able to do that. My Zygopetalum trozy blue is growing a new growth uh, right here. Got to be careful with that. It feels very delicate. And then the other Zygopetalum, that's the Luisendorf in the back there. She's also growing a new growth. I think I'm going to bring my Zygos in when the temperatures get too harsh at night, just because I want to see if I can't get them to grow as lush and beautiful as Fernanda Nacimiento orchids and succulents with her Zygos. Hers are gorgeous. And all the other orchids in the back here are doing really well. The Honolulu Binotii is growing three new growths. I'm not going to shuffle her out, but that's the one that I got from Insa Orchids and ADD. And then, of course, Hibiki got all the blooms trimmed off so that it can rest, recover, and hopefully start to grow nice big growths that I'm used to. It hasn't done that for two years, so we're going to give that orchid a rest. My pocket lover has a single bloom at the moment. Let me see if I can get that in focus. It's a wonky bloom. 
It's a bloom that doesn't make much sense, but I have other buds coming, so we'll see how the orchid is going to perform with the next few buds. She was not that big a performer bloom-wise for me this year, but at least she grew plenty of new growths, and that is important because now she's fully rooted in. She can't be asking so much of every single orchid all the time. When we move over more to the back, is my Panarica Prismartocarpa. It's maturing one new growth, <laughs> and it's got two growths that are still in the process of growing. So there's one and there's another one here to the left. That is insane. If two out of the three will bloom for us in 2024, we are in for a treat. So the repotting of my Cattleya Dinar Blue Heaven resulted in the fact that she did not bloom for us this year but she is fully rooted in now. I could actually lift this big pot with the orchid and it would all come out in one. My beautiful arborescence is doing well, of course. All we did was up pot there. There is no difficulty there. There is no stress. I'm just glad it's doing well. Has to come inside tonight. Moving up, I'm just gonna show you my Nafitz Alex Poli, the one spike still going strong. And then there's three more spikes to come, blooming way too early but no complaints. And the new growth I was pointing out earlier on, that's right here. It's going off like a real rocket, considering. But we've had extremely mild temperatures for November, two weeks straight. We've had great temperatures. So maybe that is part and parcel of why that growth is performing as if it were midsummer. My Hawaiara Lava Burst has also got a new growth developing nicely. And then another new growth coming where that spike is growing out of. So that growth there has got another new growth coming. And after this, I'm going to be cutting that spike off. Oh my, let me see that I don't jiggle you around too much. I know, I know, it's a tough call. Okay, all my dendrobiums up here are starting their winter rest. Let me see. You are on a tripod with a heavy camera. <laughs> and I've still got a pop between my legs. So they're losing their leaves, but that's okay. That's ex to be expected. The polyanthem is always one of the last to lose its leaf. You can see that the Bensoniana is already well advanced. And then in the back, my unicum is still growing. That's, that's incredible. And I'm happy about it because Michelle Fucarino showed me goals of what unicums can do if you've got the bigger form. So I'm just testing to see what have I actually got here. <laughs> if anything is out of focus, I apologize. I really do. Here is my Cirola also. This is important, all these new growths coming. Even though they're branching, that's fine. Roots are already on the mound. So that orchid is gonna be okay. And then down here, whew, I'm out of breath. That was quite challenging. And I hope you're okay. <laughs> a for effort, a like for effort, that would be great. I would appreciate that support so much. And we've only just begun. So if you're new to the channel, would you please subscribe if you haven't already done so, because we are going to be wandering through the entire patio. One of the last ones, I would say, before we will be somewhat squashed into the grow space. Consider yourself welcome. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you have any friends that are into orchids that would like to see what's going on in southern Spain, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. Right, my Aphilum Keiki's class of 2020, they are holding on to their leaves. <laughs> Impressive. These leaves are not coming off easily, so, <laughs> oh well. I would have thought by now there would be more leaf drop as the mother plant is showing more yellowing than the Keiki's are. My twinkle spike, <laughs> look at this. Look at this, impressive. And then of course, whatever this Brassavola is, is also still working on the next two new growths within the same calendar year. These three being of 2023, we're still in 2023. I don't know if these will amount to anything, any lengthwise, any size, but it is interesting because this was my zombie rhizome back in 2020. So it's good to have an orchid that can bounce back. Okay, so now let me just scoot you. The lower level, let me just say, the indoor growth space is working out quite well, I have to admit, because 
I am leaving my Lelia Purpuratus out for as long as possible. So the shuffle that was happening before the two weeks of beautiful weather, where some of the orchids had to come inside for the night temperatures to protect them, the grow space is actually accommodating really well without my Purpuratus, of course. <laughs> that helps a lot. But it will be a tight squeeze if the temperatures drop down to five for three degrees Celsius, then the Purpuratus will have to come inside. But for now, it's been relatively easy. I did a count. In past years, I was shuffling 80 plus orchids in and out. And upsetting as it is, I lost a lot of orchids. So my shuffle now includes on the daily 41 or 42 orchids. I'm not entirely sure. Some of those are mounts as well. You wouldn't see it if you looked at the grow space in the nights though, because some pot sizes have increased exponentially so it still looks really full it doesn't seem like there is much space but yeah at least the schlepping has reduced itself and even though I hate losing orchids I have to say my body is very grateful for the fact that I don't have 80 plus orchids to shift and bring into the sunshine when there is sunshine okay I'm going to show you the mother plant of my ophyllum just so that you get an idea at what stage of her winter rest she's at there's a lot of yellowing leaves here. What I go and do on the daily is just see if they come off easily in my hand and if they still have some resistance, I don't insist. This is what I do every day and I haven't actually done this today because I was waiting for the drizzle to stop and do it together with you just to make sure that it doesn't become one big mess on the floor. <laughs> These leaves are a little bit squishy as well and yeah, they, they, get, they get slippery, believe it or not, when wet. Slippery when wet. I would need to put out a little bit of a warning sign for anybody who were to be on the patio and wasn't aware. So no water for this one today, seeing as humidity is at 96%. That is plenty fine. I only give this one now a trickle of water on the days when it is super, super dry like we've been having for the past two weeks. So this one got watered a lot. I consider this mount flushed by now. The keikis up there are doing well. They're also going into their dormancy. Same procedure when it comes to care. Excuse me while I move you around. I've got my Colmenara Masai Red here. Spikes are coming along nicely. Excuse the milk crates in the back there. It's just maybe I will need them when it comes to schlepping orchids. But the spikes are coming along nicely from my Masai Red and they are starting to get nice and dark and black. This orchid is two months premature in spiking and even buds separating. I doubt we're gonna get a beautiful blooming out of this one because she had a radical repot this season. But you know what? Some blooms are better than none. And then somewhat behind me, I don't think we saw Maxillaria tenuifolia in the last patio tour. I'm loving the green foliage. It's holding up really nicely. It is possible what I'm going to do this winter is bring this orchid into the blooming alley to protect her even more from the outdoor elements because I'm enjoying the green leaves. Usually she is a very chartreuse yellow color because I give her full sun, but I always see these beautiful Maxillarias everywhere. <laughs> they have nice luscious green leaves and mine always looks a little like it. It's about to die when it's not it's just always getting so much more light next to that i have a fantastic from anonymous lelia kautskiana that has bloomed for us for the first time in this year of 2023 and that is growing another new growth and it's got a sheath in it we'll see what it does but oh my goodness if i can't tell you how pot bound this orchid is by now let me tell you how pot bound this orchid is by now and i love it so much thank you anonymous for something so special we're now at an area that i have my coffee over and i look every day several times a day to see if there's anything different with my rapiculus lelia plus other orchids collection here but mainly rapiculus lelias I wanted to show you an orchid that I got from a Cairn Orchids and Tokyo World Mark because on tours like this I also like to show some updates for those of you who do watch. This is my Lelia Kolnagoi that I got from a Cairn Orchids and Tokyo World Mark and you can see that the growth here had a sheath, it was practicing, but it's growing another beautiful new growth right there. Yeah. I'm always happy to report these kinds of successes when it comes to orchids that were gifted to me. Now, what I assumed was a coccinia, Sophronitis or Cattleya coccinia, 
Well, it's possible she is not, according to Michael McCarthy, but I don't then know what else she could be. But it's growing a beautiful new growth here. It's taking its time to develop, but we've got another one coming here. She arrived in a pathetic little state, dismal, dismal state, but it's doing absolutely fine now. I think I'm not going to be jostling her around because if she's not rooted in, I'm not going to mess with whatever is going on in the pot. But it is nice to see another new growth coming. Of course, with the temperatures being the way they are, this is more to her liking. So I guess the stressful points, we're done with that. I've had her now almost two years in the collection and she's really slow to come out of the gates. Something else I wanted to show you, I can't exactly remember where it was. <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> Very surprised to see this Lelia Regentii starting a new growth. Let's do some weeding while we're at it. Look at that. That is out of season in my opinion, but who cares? Just more roots in the making. That's all I can say. When I see Rapiculus Lelias growing new growths, even if they don't bloom, I think immediately of new growths. I'm not going to move my Itambana because she was the struggling one of 2023. Surprised me. Why are you struggling? She was extremely vigorous from the moment she arrived. So I'm not going to jostle her around, but the new growth that she was working on I'm concerned about this lead right here. That one is developing beautifully, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that all will be okay. I'm gonna have to come around with some tissue paper to get the water out of the crevices there of my Lelia biensis. There's a new growth developing here. This was from last year. She hasn't bloomed for us yet, but you know, to each their own, eventually she will bloom. Now, because of last year's performance, my Lelia Hapophila, I am kind of looking forward to seeing another new growth from her soon. <laughs> this is the growth she developed right after she finished blooming. And the reason I'm greedy, I'm looking for a second growth is because last year she produced two new growths and bloomed on both of them. So I would appreciate to see a second new growth coming soon. Normally she blooms in February and well, we shall see. I would rather forfeit blooming. I would prefer a second new growth. <laughs> but what is really exciting is my crispy labia. This is going to be a first time bloomer. Look at this. We've got buds. Isn't that cool? It's taking forever for these buds to develop. And I'm a little bit, of course, concerned that this is the stage we're going to get to. And then they're going to blast or something is going to come along and nip it in the bud. Not me, because this orchid has been in my collection oh, since 2020. I don't want to move the tag. Let me just check. 20. Yeah, 2020. Always go with your first inclination when you say something. It usually proves to be correct. Anyway, she's not the OG of my Rapiculus Lelius, but hey, here we are. We're seeing buds for the first time. Now, down here, I have a few that are also pretty pleasing. Por fin. To the left, in the back, is my Montecari, and that one has a sheath. It was nibbled by Ratatouille, but thankfully the growth itself is still there. The sheath at the base feels like there's something in it, but it's probably going to wait until the temperatures are right before it's going to bloom, if it's going to bloom. But either way, this Montecari was in a terrible state when it arrived, and here we are. Fantastic growth, and well, as far as I'm concerned, if nothing else interferes and I don't do a major blunder, Montecari is here to stay. Another orchid I got from Anonymous is my Herney, doing really well and is growing another new growth in the middle. So I'm just going to skim over these very quickly so you don't get bored. But the Angereri that I got from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones, we saw her recently. There's not much new activity, still doing well. Faunery, hmm. I'm a little bit on the edge here. I've got one lead that is kind of not performing the way it was, so concerned about that, but the rest of the orchid is looking fine. The new growth on my Esalkeana is developing, and my Sangilobia is okay. I'm saying that because I'm looking for another new growth to be 100% sure, but the structures aren't declining. The fact they're wilting, it's just a different growth habit. So the new growth that she grew for us this year, I think the orchid has got plenty of roots in the pot now, and all she now needs to do is come unto her own. 
I think she's safe, especially from the pup. My OG Sangulobia was digested by a puppy when he was here just, you know, 10 days in. He has by now learned the no. Let me look at another one that I got from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. This is the Millery crossed with Longi. You can see that the new growth there is maturing. Now all we need is roots because the new growth that is over here, which I hope you can see there, that failed. But yeah, I'm leaving her outside now so that she knows that I find she has it in her to make it. Give her a boost of confidence. If I show her I believe she can do it, she's going to prove us right. Ah yes, the recently divided repotted <laughs> Regina, I'm not going to move her but we've still got that one pseudobulb that declined. We don't have any further decline. And we have that one new growth that was very important to trigger the repotting and the splitting of her because of rotting pseudobulbs. That is progressing nicely. And I'm hoping the drizzle rain was agreeable for her root system. This is my Millery OG. You see, this Millery here arrived in such a pathetic state that triggered Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones to gift me the Millery crossed with long yeeps just so that I have a Millery of sorts in my collection when they saw the state of this orchid and when it arrived. Ever so grateful, I'll always be grateful, but I'm also extremely grateful and happy to report that even after the thrips attack and everything, this growth here, the beautiful one that's standing up straight like a candle, this growth is majestic. It is absolutely fully rooted in. Millery is on the grow, let's just say. Gracilis, gifted to me by the Orchid Room, Michael McCarthy and Melissa Walker, doing fabulously. She just recently got a little bit of moss trim. And then, well, this one, <laughs> my Nafert's Alex Foley, should not be in bloom this time of year, but she is with six spikes and aphid free because of the time of year. Exciting to see that my flower here is really developing nicely, even though the leaves look a little bit off. That was because of scale that I missed. Sometimes all I do is look at the top until I learned it the hard way that scale likes the underside of the leaves of Rapiculus lalias specifically it's very difficult to see them because the leaves are so tough they don't leave a mark until it's far too late but scale free now and well she didn't bloom for us in 2023 but my goodness she came right out of the gates with two new growths and is maturing the next new growth with a beautiful sheath now this orchid is totally pot bound but i'm not going to lift the pot up and show you trust and believe that if i were to lift the orchid up the pot is coming along with her <laughs> i skipped an orchid i wanted to show you here is my van der Falkata. this is where she's going to live in the winter usually she is on the east side patio table with a lot more light i want to give her a little bit of a respite not blast her with that sunlight unless of course we're going to have lots of cloudy days back to back to back then she will go on the east side but this entire row here along the hedge is full bright shade until about mid-april end of april so she'll get a lot of light but she won't be blasted with it just wanted to see if I can help her out a little bit. Now, normally they can go all the way down to zero degrees Celsius, but you know, in cultivation, things are a little bit different. So we'll have to wait and see. She already has some signs of what I believe is cold damage, which is unusual. It's too soon for that. So I put her here. And if need be, she will go in the blooming alley for a little bit more protection as well. Right. Speaking of right, moving on swiftly to the remnants of my telumnias. Now, we may be seeing these telumnias for the last time, and I'm not trying to ask for any kind of sympathy because it seems like I'm repeating that a lot lately with my telumnias. If you've been watching my videos, you'll say, yeah, we've heard that before, but this is three of what was eight at the beginning of the season. I cleaned out the last basket today. So this one is probably going to go as well. This is the pink brish. I'm enjoying the blooms for the time being of, I don't know what it's like, but I like it. Named by Michael McCarthy. That spike is going to come off after we finished filming. And just because I wanted to show you that this orchid was still capable of blooming with two spikes, buds were chewed off by Ratatouille. Anyway, 
after this video, these spikes are coming off to give my telumnias a rest. And then we have brown spots is also in bloom. Brown spots looked really, really good at the beginning of the season. What you're seeing now with the anthocyanin is a combination of two things, light and it's been a little bit chilly. I've left them outside because you can see the back of the orchid, beautiful green, the way telumnias should be. This is the front of the orchid that is facing the light, but I'm thoroughly enjoying these little blooms. And once this little bloom has opened up and I've been able to document this spike, what's going to happen? You guessed it, the spike is coming off. The second spike that was growing here, that was eaten off by Ratatouille. When the orchid had to come inside to protect her from the elements, I wasn't able to protect her from Ratatouille, which was most annoying. In case you were wondering about Ratatouille, well, Ratatouille is no more, thankfully. The paranoia remains though, and I'm checking my grow space every day. Anyway, here we are with Dendrobium exilia, has been featured quite a lot recently. Well, when an orchid blooms the way an orchid blooms, and it does bloom at a time of year when there aren't that many blooms to see, my fourth flush of exilia blooms, I thought I would just show them to you. All these blooms, I wish they would be a little bit more consolidated, more together, but yeah, they're a bit spread out. <laughs> but gorgeous nonetheless. She has been glam camping for the past nights while it was mild. She will come in tonight. But isn't that gorgeous? That would be blooming number four. So we have staggered blooming with Exile. While the blooms don't last very long, with the staggered blooming, you have a feeling that this orchid's now been in bloom for the past three to four months. I guess there is a yin and a yang there as well. An orchid that should not have bloomed this time of year, and it shows in the blooms, is my Serrata labium, AKA Sharky on the patio. Because the blooms are so delicate, they're also not long lasting, but they're showing signs of botrytis. So I just wanted to show that to you before I cut this entire cluster collection off. But that would have been her third blooming for the season as well. Super happy because this orchid, she's rocking it. She loves her independence. <laughs> An orchid that does bloom this time of year and not only this time of year, but has been an incredible performer for me in 2023 is my Dendrobium Victoria Regina. You can see that since we saw her the last time, we've got the two blooms still that were already open. And well, we've got these buds. I mean, oh, if I didn't know any different, I'd be there going chomp, chomp. They just look so delicious, like grapes. And then here we have another cluster and the canes are bursting open in several random areas. So we've got more Victoria Regina blooms to look forward to. Absolutely digging this orchid. So happy she's on her mount. I check every day to see if the roots that we saw on the mounting video, uh, I'm kind of hoping that they will touch the cork eventually, but it would appear now that we've got her in bloom that the roots are saying, yeah, that's it. I can't do it all in one go, but isn't this beautiful? Isn't she just beautiful? The branch is coming along beautifully. The new growth that started earlier this season is beautiful. <laughs> it's still growing. Another new growth still growing. The cakey that we had right in, I think it was 2020, it is now finally finished growing. So hopefully in 2024, we will see that come onto its own and see which bloom it has. Because yes, there's three different types of Victoria Regina on here because I bought two just to double up and be sure. And they were at a great price back then. Difficult to find back then. So I snapped up two and it turns out as things are blooming out, I have three different types of blooms. The darkest being this one and then they get a little bit more white in them, a little bit more variation. I'm excited to see what that keiki is bloom-wise. Anyway, shall we move on to the west side shelving area? Let me just make sure the drizzle is okay. The drizzle is okay. So if you are so inclined, come on over. We're going to the west side. If it's your first time here, welcome. This is the west side to give you an overview. I've got all the little vandacious ones hanging on what used to be very large vanda rack. Now it's their rack. That's fine. It's their home. They're growing as well. So they have plenty of space on that rack. Nobody's competing even when it's windy. Look at my chow prior. 
Isn't that insane? Yeah, and she still smells like blueberry candy, sugar candy. Up there are my Ancelia Africanas. Um, they're still in active growth, believe it or not, and I'm hoping for some blooms because some of the ends of those new canes are showing signs that there is a possibility of spikes. I have four of them up there, which is awesome. Now, tonight they're going to have to come down. I'm not bringing them inside, but I'm going to bring them down to this middle shelf right here, which up until now has housed some of the orchids that have to come inside. I've got my Bacavia, I've got my Digbiana, and let me do one more jiggle. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and do this very, very carefully. I want to show Michael McCarthy the Aurantiflameum, Flammeum, which was attacked by Ratatouille. And you can see the points where it started to chew. At least it didn't compromise the growing points. That would be this one and this one. And let me see if I can get you to see the cane. This one, unfortunately, the growing point is compromised. It was chewed down to the cane and the pseudobulb was chewed as well but it produced roots for us. The other one is still okay. And the good news is there's a second branching where the third one, the original one, was not compromised by Ratatouille. There's another branching coming here. So Michael McCarthy, I know that this should be an orchid that should have progressed so much better than it really has. Yeah. I'm getting a grip on it. <laughs> At least there are no thrips anymore. So all of these orchids are going to have to come inside. There's one thing I wanted to show you and get you in a little bit closer. Not because I'm going to take you to the orchid. I'm going to bring the orchid to you. I just don't want to trip over the tripod, you know. <laughs> I have treated many orchids preventatively for scale leading up to the Inidus, not the Exodus. <laughs> we had the Exodus, now we're going Inidus. But this is my Iricolor. I wanted to show you that beautiful new growth coming. I normally say mature in 12 months, but I was very surprised how quickly this growth matured in 2023. That's not normal. There's a white speck there. So just check the underside of the leaves. I may need to do a little bit touch up on this one before I take it inside. Ooh, and I spy with my little eye a new root growing. Woohoo! In the past couple of days, I've had all these orchids outside. The Epicatantes and all those shouldn't get direct sun, even though it's winter sun. Yeah, I was still a little bit hesitant. So their leaves are curling. They didn't appreciate the night temperatures, even though I thought that would be fine. My mistake, but the Vendacious orchids out here doing really well. The Ascocentrum, yeah, all these are now coming inside. My Chrysnetia green light as well. Pardon the buckets, pardon the picture. This is an active working area. No water today for my little No ID Vanda hybrid. Just want to show you that the growth at the stems, the new growth, they're doing really, really well. Eh, I may need to give them a trickle because as far as I was concerned, they were supposed to get have had enough rain, but this is bone dry. So I might just actually give them a trickle around the basket before they come inside. Not into the crown, but that moss is separating from the basket. Dang, are you drinking more than I thought you would? Okay. <laughs> but I'm really pleased because these new growths in here, they are super important. The orchid is looking a tad straggly, but they will fill in some blanks. And then here is my weirdo. The original piece in its basket with its first bloom that is actually perfect. <laughs> You can see the gnarliness of the spike. So just one bloom. There won't be any more blooms from this one. But I've got spikes on every single fan. <laughs> and if this orchid were blooming perfectly, it would be a beautiful, beautiful spectacle. This way, the visual is not that pretty because they all bloom deformed, but the fragrance is divine. So there's that. <laughs> If not for nothing, this orchid is growing and blooming superbly. <laughs> not beautifully, but superbly. And my OG Lucneri, the classic Lucneri. None of this funky genetic weirdness stuff. Hanging out, actively growing roots. Let me show you, at least there's one here by the spider web. And then underneath they're curling around. 
that will stop as soon as the temperatures drop even further. So loved it. Has been a great performer. The three fans it has now, this being the original fan, and that one of course always bloomed, but this year it bloomed for the first time with two spikes twice within the same calendar year. And all the fans down here, the new ones that it's grown since it arrived in my collection, they are all now blooming size as well. Have as yet to bloom two times per year, but maybe 2024 will be the year that these fans, the new ones, are going to be mature enough to also bloom for us two times per year. Oh my goodness, I was just about to wrap up this video and I did this dodging the drizzle and here we are now. <laughs> Here comes the sun. Oh, it is glorious. It feels beautiful against my back. Oh my goodness, what a blessing. Anyway, I wish I had known this before. <laughs> I'm not going to do this again, so I hope that you saw something that you enjoyed. But now that we've got the sun, I will never ever end a patio tour and end up on the west side without showing you my van der Chau Praia. When an orchid does this, <laughs> yes, it gets a lot of exposure. We didn't see Cousin It today and he's babbling away in my mind, but we have seen him recently quite a lot as well and we will see a lot more of him in the future. But Chao Praia is just great with these cooler temperatures. I mean, these blooms usually last a good while anyway, but with these cooler temperatures, they are still crisp and pristine and I can enjoy them without ants. Yes, because it's too cold for even the ants to come out. So they're all ours. We don't have to share these with ants. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love it. And with that being said, I'm going to love you and leave you and say thank you so, so much for watching. I so appreciate your time, your support, the fact that you would share, like, and subscribe this video. It also goes a long way in supporting the channel. So thank you so much for that as well. If you've watched to the end, hey, you know what's coming. Gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.